Hello everyone, let's take a look at this practice problem. The problem describes a square surface, so we'll kind of draw this, and that square surface is immersed within a uniform electric field. So we can represent this with, let me go my cursor, we can represent this with electric field lines that travel through the surface. And this is a uniform electric field. This square surface also has a normal vector that the problem asks us to assume is outwards, as though the surface were one face of a box. And the angle between this normal and the electric field lines is theta which is given to us as 35 degrees. Now the problem asks us to calculate the electric flux through the square surface. So it's important to understand how to calculate electric flux. Now generally speaking, the formula for electric flux tells us that the flux is equal to the closed surface integral of the dot product of the strength of the electric field and the area of the normal vector. However, for more simplified cases like this, where there's a uniform electric field and the area is very simple to calculate, this can be simplified down to being written as just the magnitude of the electric field multiplied by the surface area that the field lines are passing through multiplied by the cosine of theta. However, with the case of this problem specifically, that angle might make things a bit confusing. So let's go through this step by step. So the electric field, that's easy, that's given to us as 1800 newtons per coulomb, no issues there. The area, that's just going to be equal to the area of the square, which is just going to be the square of the side length we're given, 3.2 millimeters, that part's easy too. But the, the theta here that we use in the cosine might be a little bit confusing because technically, with the way flux is defined, the angle that actually should be in the cosine is the angle between the head of the normal vector and the heads of the electric field vector lines. The problem does give us an angle theta, but if we look at the diagram, we can see that that angle is between the head of the normal vector and the tail of the electric field lines. So this is not actually the angle that we want to put into our formula for the electric flux. Because one of those vectors is in the wrong direction, that means that the angle we're given, theta, is actually the supplement to the angle we'll actually want to use. So this theta value right here, the actual angle, which I've labeled as theta prime, can be found by taking 180 degrees and subtracting what they've given to us as theta. So 180 degrees minus 35 degrees, which is 145 degrees. So that's the angle we actually want to use in our formula for the flux. So the flux is equal to the electric field, which is 1800 newtons per coulomb, multiplied by the surface area of the square, which is 3.2 millimeters or 3.2 times 10 to the power of negative 3 meters squared, multiplied by the cosine of 145 degrees. So if we put all of that into a calculator, then we find an electric flux of negative 1.5 multiplied by 10 to the power of negative 2 newton meters squared per coulomb. And that is the answer to our problem. So all in all, a fairly simple problem. You just got to apply the flux formula. But the only thing that might get tricky is the whole angle business. And I will say this. There's actually one way that this problem could have been seen as being even easier. Because what you might notice if you experiment is that whether you plug in 145 degrees or 35 degrees for the cosine, the only thing that actually changes is the sign of the result. So even if you put in 35 degrees, you'd still get 1.5 multiplied by 10 to the power of negative 2. It just would be positive rather than negative. 
But despite that dilemma, we still could have been able to figure out that it's ne that the answer should be negative anyway, because the problem specifically tells us to take the normal to be directed outwards. And when we're dealing with flux and field lines, a general rule of thumb that we always want to keep in mind is that when the field lines are traveling inside the, sur the surface of the box, into the surface, then we can always expect the flux to be negative. So that's something to keep in mind and something that would be useful to recognize even if you made a sign error during your calculations. So that's important to keep in mind. But otherwise, that is it for this problem, which means that that is it for this video. So that's all for now. I hope you, I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please consider subscribing as that'll help me out in making more videos like this. And if you have a, a question, leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to figure to help you out as best as I can. If you have a request for a future video or you just like to hang out, my Discord server and my alternate YouTube channels and all that are linked in the description below. So check those out if you'd like. But that's all for now, and I hope you all have a lovely day. Bye-bye.